Welcome to Bears Now. I am Harrison Graham. We've got a mailbag coming up this week, probably on Thursday. So use hashtag Bears. Ask your questions in the comments section. I'll get to as many of them as possible. Again, mailbag on Thursday. Q&A, ask me anything. Free agency, draft, whatever you want, Bears or not related. If you want to be funny, we can answer some of those questions as well. Now, let's get into today's episode of Chicago Bears Now. Six quarterbacks the Bears can trade for this offseason. That is today's show. Let's start with Jacoby Brissett out of the Indianapolis Colts. Not a lot of chatter around Brissett and the Bears compared to some of these other guys we'll get to here in a little bit. Now, Brissett's interesting. The Colts are in an interesting spot overall because first half of last year actually played really well. Of course, they were surprised when Andrew Luck decided to retire two weeks before the regular season. They insert Jacoby Brissett, and they start off 5-2, and two, and he plays really, really well, giving him that two-year $30 million contract before last season. Now, you look at his first seven games, last seven games, keep in mind, missed a game and a half in the middle of the year with an uh, MCL sprain. But before the sprain, look, he played good, almost 65% completion, over 225 per game, 14 touchdowns, three picks, his rating at almost 100. Not huge volume as far as yardage goes, but very, very efficient wasn't the same guy second half of the year. The Colts faltered. He did not play well. The knee really impacted his accuracy, in my opinion, barely over 56%. And you see that rating at the bottom at just 75. So kind of a tale of two seasons for Jacoby Brissett. I think a trade package would look something like this because I think the Colts have to decide if he is their franchise quarterback or not, and I'm guessing the answer is no. I think a fifth-round pick gets it done. Look, if Brissett, and this is one of those trades for the Colts that would probably come together during the draft, honestly. Like, say Justin Herbert slides and they can draft him, then maybe they flip Brissett for a, for a day three pick. I think that's a possibility. Is Brissett a franchise quarterback? You guys see the question. Type Y for yes, type N for no. I don't know. I think if you bring him in, he competes with Mitch, and you see what happens. But uh, I think this could be a possibility that the Colts trade Brissett, especially if they draft a quarterback in the NFL draft. All right, guys, we've hit the 2,500 mark on our Bears channel, youtube.com slash bears. Now go ahead and hit that big red button. Let's get to 3,000 by March 1st. We have a lot of videos, tons of coverage planned this offseason. Here's some of the stuff we've already done. Just released my top 20 Bears free agent targets. Go ahead and check that out on the channel. We got draft coverage. We have rumors, news. I mentioned Q&A. We have one coming up again this week. Already did one a few weeks back. Take all your Bears questions. Remember, use hashtag Bears in the comments section. Got tons of stuff planned on the channel this offseason. YouTube.com slash Bears now. Go ahead and get hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 3,000 by March 1st. Next player up here, we got Nick Foles, who we've talked briefly about. Look, I don't love this idea, but I've got him on the list because I think the Jags are looking to trade him, and I think the Bears would do it for the right price. Now, coming off a really bad season in Jacksonville, he broke his collarbone, but even when he played, he just was not very good. 0-4 in his four starts, got benched at the end of the year for Gardner Minshew because, you remember, broke his collarbone early in the season. Minshew came in, played well. Foles got back into the starting lineup, wasn't the same guy. As you see the numbers on the screen, just not very good. 0-4 as a starter. They went back to Minshew. So Jacksonville's got to decide what they're doing at quarterback moving forward. Maybe they draft one. Maybe they go with Gardner Minshew. If they can find a trade partner for Nick Foles, they'll do it because he's got $57.25 million remaining on his contract with a good chunk of that guarantee. This is the trade package I put together for Foles and the Bears. Send a sixth round pick, get Nick Foles, also get a seventh round pick in return. I think the Bear, I think the Jags would throw an extra pick to get off of Nick Foles' contract. Again, I'm not crazy about this idea. I, I would rather roll with Trubisky and see if he can continue to improve and develop than bring on Nick Foles, but I think this is what a trade package would look like. Now, I'm picking Trubisky. I just told you guys that. Who are you guys picking? Would you rather have Nick Foles or Mitch Trubisky? Type F for Foles, type T for Trubisky. I'm going with Mitch. I'd rather give the young guy more opportunity, uh, let him be the starter in 2020 and see what happens after that. Maybe he shows he can be your franchise quarterback. We've seen throughout, you know, as the season ended and on to the offseason, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace say he's the starting quarterback. They've revamped this offensive staff, and typically you're not doing that 
if you're planning on trading for someone else, I think they're trying to give Mitch every opportunity to, to prove that he can be the face of the Bears franchise. Now, do I think that's going to happen? I'm not sure. I got to see what happens in 2020 if they do not trade for a, a quarterback to become the starter. I know that's what we're talking about today, but if Mitch is the guy, he's got to prove it this year. It is a make or break season in 2020. Now, Bears fans, we got a lot of gear on sale for you guys. Go to this link, chatsports.com slash Bears sale. There's t-shirts. There's some sweet flat bills and all kinds of hats. A lot of this stuff on sale for up to 50% off. This polo remains on sale for like 30% off. Tons of stuff that you can find with our partner, Fanatics. Chatsports.com slash Bears sale. You're not going to find this stuff cheaper anywhere else. So go to that link. It'll be in the comments. It'll be down in the description of this video. Chatsports.com slash Bears sale. Number four, quarterback trade target. How about Dak Prescott? Now, I'm still very much in the camp that the Cowboys are going to get a deal done with Dak, but negotiations have gotten a little sticky this offseason as they've been negotiating with Dak and his camp for about a year now. He bet on himself last season, played really well. If they signed him last offseason and he agreed to it, it probably would have been in the $28, $30, $31 million range. He's probably going to get $35 or more now, and he's going to cost a lot if you trade him. Now, the only way a trade can happen is, is if the Cowboys tag him. So keep that in mind as well. The reason he's going to cost a ton, do you see those numbers from this past year? Breakout season, almost 5,000 yards, 30 touchdowns to 11 picks. Now, some of that is increased volume due to the Cowboys being down in a lot of football games, especially in the second half of the year. But you could tell Dak Prescott took a step forward in 2019. He's going to cost a ton on the open market. I think this is what a trade would have to look like if the Bears are going to get Prescott. Both your second round picks this year, number 43 overall, number 50 pick, and your first next year. Look, when a young franchise quarterback like Dak Prescott hits the open market, it costs about two first round picks typically. And two seconds and a first, that's about two first round picks. That is what it is going to take to get Dak. And keep in mind, then you're going to have to pay him a lot as well. So a lot of factors to consider if you're Chicago, but he would certainly be an upgrade from Mitchell Trubisky. How much would you give up for Dak? How much? Would you give up uh, all those picks for Dak or, and then pay him the $35, $36 million per year? Let me know. Give me your ideas. Give me your answers down in the comment section. Your GM, Ryan Pace, for the day. Go ahead and answer that question. Next up here, we got Cam Newton, who maybe has been linked the most, or at least the second most, uh, to the Bears as far as quarterbacks go this offseason. Tons of quarterbacks have been linked to Chicago. Uh, he's linked to trade rumors in general. I'm not sure how Matt Rule and this new staff for Carolina views Cam Newton. He's certainly their best option on their roster. Will Greer is probably going to be a career backup type. Kyle Allen played okay last year, but was not the same guy the second half of the season. Problem with Cam is his health. He's got the one-year $21 million left on his contract. Um, so, you know, if you bring him in and it doesn't work out, you know, he's only under contract for 2020, but he is going to cost more. Now, his past four seasons, you know, since 2015 when he won the MVP, he's been up and down. The accuracy has waned at times. In 2018, he was really good, but he's battled injuries the, la the last year, year and a half. So, I don't know if we've seen Cam's best days. I'm guessing we probably have. Now, I still like Cam if he's healthy, but if he's not mobile, he's not accurate enough from the pocket with me. I'd rather go with Mitch. So I think this is what a trade is going to be if you try to get Cam. Second round pick, your higher one at number 43 overall, and then probably a conditional day three pick next year, depending on how many games Cam plays. If he reaches th certain thresholds, you know how that – stuff tends to work. I think something like that would get it done. It's going to be in Carolina's camp, though. Do they want Cam Newton to be their quarterback in 2020? If not, plenty of teams are going to try to trade for the former MVP. Now, we've talked about Cam. We've talked about Dak. Pick a quarterback, type C for Cam, type D for Dak. Cam's not going to cost as much. He's older. He's been injured a little bit the last couple of years. Obviously, Dak is younger. He's more ascending as a player. So with all those factors in mind, pick a quarterback and let me know. Got a couple of players left. Let's go to Andy Dalton, the Cincinnati Bengals quarterback. Now, barring the Bengals doing, well, a Bengals, they're going to draft Joe Burrow number one. So that means Andy Dalton's available. He'll either get traded, he can get released. He doesn't have any dead cap hit. 
for 2020, so they can release him for nothing. But obviously, they're going to try and trade him, and he's still a starting level caliber quarterback. He's not elite by any means, but he's, I don't know, the 22nd best quarterback in the NFL, and there's 32 teams, which means he is a starter. And I think right now, at least for one or two years, he's still better than Mitch Trubisky. That's why I've got him at number two. 17.7 million on his contract next season. That's not a ton of money, guys. Like that's that's pretty quarterback friendly for a starting quarterback. And then again, he's a free agent after this year. He's been up and down the last few years. Played under a uh, new Bears offensive coordinator, Bill Lazor, from 2016 to 2018 in Cincinnati. So you've got that familiarity. The connection there. Uh, Cincinnati obviously uh, has been in a bad place for a few years. That defense has fallen apart. AJ Green's been hurt. Been a lot of factors for Andy Dalton, but I think you could get him for fourth, fifth round pick. Obviously, uh, Bears are waiting to see if they get that fourth round uh, comp pick for Adrian Amos, but I think a fifth would get it done because, look, if the Bengals draft Burrow, they'll take just about anything for Dalton. They're not just going to cut him. Like, if, it, if the best offer they get is a fifth or a sixth, they're going to take it because Burrow's going to be the future of that franchise and Dalton's on his way out the door. So I think a fifth would get it done for Andy Dalton, especially since he just has one year left on his deal. So let me know, which quarterback, what quarterback, should the Bears trade for this offseason? Look, I think Mitch is going to be the guy. I think they're going to give him 2020 to prove that he can be the starter. But if the Bears make a trade, and if they are dead set on making a trade, what quarterback should it be? Go ahead and type your comments down below. And then the top guy that continues to be linked to the Bears, and the rumors around this guy are really eating up, it's Derek Carr. And that's because reports are surfacing that the Raiders continue to be in pursuit of Tom Brady. You saw the, that report fly out over the weekend that they're going to offer him two years and $60 million. I don't know how true that is, but it certainly seems like uh, the Raiders are trying to make a splash as they move from Oakland to Las Vegas. That's how it feels. I don't think they're sold on Derek Carr. And look, yeah, Carr has three years left in his deal, $63.5 million, but he's got a quarterback-friendly contract, guys. Like, his cap hit is not that much over the next few years, and he's got virtually zero dead money on his deal. So if you bring him on board and you release him or trade him later, like, it's not going to cost that much against you. Less than $20 million cap hit if you trade for him over the next three years? For a starting quarterback, guys, that is very, very cheap. We, we talked about Dak Prescott earlier. Guys, he's going to cost $35, $36 million per year. Is he $15, $16 million per year better than Derek Carr? I don't think so. I think he's better. I don't think he's that much better, though. He had a good year last year. Look, and, and Oakland was kind of a mess. The whole A-B thing, uh, Antonio Brown, that thing fell apart on him. Still had 4,000 yards and 21 touchdowns with the 70% completion percentage. Like, he played pretty well in 2019. Now, he's not a top 10 quarterback by any means, but a lot of you Bears fans want to trade for Alex Smith, who A, is probably not healthy, and B, even if he is, the mobility is not going to be there. Derek Carr is essentially Alex Smith, guys. Like, it's basically the same player with a little less mobility. Accurate, good underneath an intermediate passer. Sure, it doesn't stretch the field a ton, but does not make a ton of mistakes. This is the trade I put together. Second round pick, your number 50 overall. You get Carr and a third in return. So I think he's in that third round pick range for a trade. Bears don't have a third round pick, so you send him your lower second, get a third in return, and also get Derek Carr. I think that could get it done. Those are the six quarterbacks I think the Bears could trade for this offseason.